Hey there, my name is Sheila Beck and the Evil Rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And it's been a, it's been a good few months since uh, Doctor Who: The Timeless Children has aired, and yeah, we we've uh, there's been time for the dust to settle and for us to uh, step back and take stock. Well, we've really we've really had a, a lot of advantages in stepping back and taking stock because everybody's lives suddenly got put on hold. Didn't you? Yeah, pretty much the week or so after the Timeless Children aired, and we were like, ah, so. What I'm really convinced the production team, uh, Christopher Chibnall and the production team, thought was going to happen. Thought was going to happen when they aired the Time of Children. They thought we were going to love it. They thought fandom was going to love it. And why wouldn't they think that? Because it's got all the ingredients uh, of things that fans generally love. It's a revelation about the Doctor's past. It's going back to Gallifrey. It's a, it's a, it's a game changer. And, you know, all these things have really done quite well in Doctor Who. Up until now. So the the one real difference is, you know, the other ones were done by people who know, understand, and love Doctor Who. Which, you know, again, I can't get my head around the fact that Chimnall just doesn't. Demonstrably, clearly, clearly, clearly doesn't. Because, uh, you know, he was that obnoxious fan from, you know, was it, 87? Uh, reaming out Pip and Jane Baker and John Nathan Turner. Which, quite, quite noticeably, he's not really quite happy to engage with the fans. To the same level that they would, because he thinks he knows what's going to happen. You know, yeah, when they thought everything was going to be great, they, they, you know, Jody and and James, they were everywhere, front and center. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Soon as season eleven ended, they kind of vanished, vanished from view, uh, you know, completely. So we're going to be talking about the state of Doctor Who, what you know, what's going on in it, and uh, and yeah, you know, just general stuff uh, you know, of that. But before we get there, can I ask you guys? Can you hit the subscribe button? I'm getting so freaking close to a thousand subscribers. It will be fantastic if you guys can put me over the edge. I want to entice you. I want to encourage you to hit the subscribe button. So if you subscribe, you can uh, enter to win fantastic prizes. We, we give something away every week on the channel. What I'm giving away this week is the Ultimate Matrix DVD box set. It's got the Matrix. It's got the Matrix Reloaded. It's got the Matrix Revolutions. I kind of like, not many people did, but I actually did quite like them. It's got the Animatrix, these really cool anime, um, animations, cartoons, <laughs> taking place within the Matrix universe, and a ton of documentaries. All you need to do to win it is subscribe to the channel. Subscribe and then hit uh, uh, in the comments. Leave the hashtag, there is no spoon. There is no spoon. We change the, the prize every week. This prize was, was for two weeks. Uh, because it's, it's a pretty darn good one. So we change them every week. We're doing the giveaway tonight when I'm on the Tarda Zone with, with Noel. Uh, we're going to be doing a watch-along of uh, Bad Wolf. Ooh, season 1, episode, was it 11, 12? I can't remember. Yeah, but it's, it's a really good episode. I really, really like it. Um, fine, so yeah, uh, so we got that. And also, uh, just for stopping by and watching the video, I am very grateful. If you can hit the subscribe button, I am even more grateful. With you. Thank you for stopping by. Check the, the video notes. There is a download link for a... Uh, a, a uh, uh, science fiction audio story called Sapphire and Still, The Passenger. This was produced by a company, a wonderful company called Big Finish uh, that made really, really good uh, uh, audio drama. The, the Sapphire and Still used to be a TV show in well, the late 70s, early 80s. Go check my video about it because I, 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 you can find them, find them all on YouTube. Anyway, so this, they, they did a, a three or four audio series which are really, really good, but now they, they, they've they uh, let the license go, and you can't buy them anymore. You can't get them legally anywhere. So I'm sneakily putting them into the into the download, into the uh, uh, the, uh, the, the the video description for you to download. If I get in trouble, i got to take them down. <laughs> okay, but may I recommend, if you download it and you listen to it and enjoy it, I'd really recommend you because they're really freaking good. Uh, and, and then for some reason, Big Finish gets the license back and they start selling them again. Go over to the website bigfinish.com and 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 you know pay for it. You know show your show, show your appreciation uh, by by buying it. So you know what people are not buying that that uh, has become very 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 obvious. They're not buying anything with Jodie Whittaker's face on it connected to Doctor Who. Well, they're not. They're, they're it, it, I'm gonna say they're not buying. Some people buy it, sure, but I think it's become pretty obvious, and I think it's been obvious for over a year. To at least to the BBC, even though they kept bloody quiet about it, that uh, she is commercial poison. You put her face on anything, interest just goes. Bleh. You know, I, look, they, they, this is really what happened. They 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 made Doctor Who, uh, Christian Jim made Doctor Who, uh, and Jodie were um, not for you know normal people, <laughs> not for regular people who like you know look at other people as people, not collections of uh, of uh, um, uh, traits like. Uh, like skin color or sexual orientation or gender. Well, look at people like people, which is why I think 
the vast majority of human people, uh, yeah, human beings, look at other pe- human beings. We just look at them as people. But they instead they made Doctor Who for the uh, the blue checkmark Twitterati, and it turns out not so many of them. <laughs> it turns out, yeah, you know, you can't really back it. And if there are a lot of them, there's not that many of them that buy stuff. People who buy stuff happen to be uh, kind of old white men, which is. Yeah, you know, we've been kind of told for the last two years on Doctor Who, they're the bad people, they're the enemy, they're they're the evil. But it turns out, you know, old white men kinda kinda uh keep keep uh keep keep the will will uh wills moving. So it's become uh, to me anyway, look by this channel is not a news channel, it's an opinion channel. Because I'm a very, very opinionated person. That's me. The bottom line. I'm a very opinionated person. This is not news, this is my opinion on what's going on. So uh, the well, first we got the uh, announcement of Time Lord Victoria to, about a month or so ago, and I was really excited when I saw. It. I was really like, "Yes, real Doctor Who, David Tennant being a dark David Tennant," and I will. It, and I'm still kind of excited, but yeah, it just seems after a few weeks, it seems really clear it was a very cynical attempt to win back the uh, financial support of people like me. Who uh, they spent years alienating. They spent years alienating by going, "Ah, oh, we don't, yeah, you know, we don't like you anymore." Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, this is our market. We want to, we want to market to I, again the blue check mark Twitter arty, and there's just not many of them. You know how many I think there are. Uh, recently, Emily Cook, who I I don't have a bad word to say about at all. I think she's done wonderful things. Emily Cook is the assistant editor of Doctor Who magazine. She she arranged tons of really really good. And I would say unifying Doctor Who content uh, in this lockdown period. One of the things she did was uh, this uh, a recreation of the song from the Rings of Akatat, which I really didn't like that episode. Listen, if you're going to put a Flash Gordon scooter, uh, you know, air scooter in an episode, I, I, you're just going to, you, it's going to be impossible not to think of Ted, the movie Ted, whenever you say, which is, you know, <laughs> which does take away from the drama. Anyway, there was a, uh, yeah, the other thing I hate about episode was that leaf that uh, got caught in, uh, Clara's mother's face and the whole like, oh my spouse. Thing. Okay, this has turned into a review of Old Things Akatan. I I like it better than any Doctor Who that we've seen for the last two years, but I just didn't, didn't like it. I thought that leaf looked very fake, by the way. And the whole like, oh my stars thing. Again, didn't like it. Uh but they had a song in there which it was actually it was a it was actually a very, very beautiful piece of music, which they, they recreated and they had uh, fans like to uh, to sing it and they and they, they, they put them all together and it made this wonderful chorus. But, you know, it seemed to appeal to the fans of the current era more than anybody else. So I would say you see all these faces of all these different fans, like, ah, singing the song as they go by. I think that's the entirety of the, <laughs> of the client base. And it's not really uh, really enough. So they came up with this thing called Time of Victorious. Uh, because, uh, yeah, I think the uh, the sales data was very clear for the last year that this this is just not be, not supported. It's not make it this it rejected one audience which hey we've seen that in the fandom menace quite a bit they rejected one audience uh expecting there to be another and it's not there and now they're really upset because what they were really hoping what they were really hoping is the yeah, us evil old white men the patriarchy that they that they fight against uh was a dying force and you know they're the new young voice of uh of a progressive, wonderful new world. Turns out, not not uh, not to be the case. Turns out they're just massive dicks. They're, <laughs> they're not a bold new voice at all. They're just really annoying dicks who think they're right about everything, even when objectively, kind of not. So, uh, so you know, BBC are, are in this position right now. So they do not want to admit they're wrong. They don't want to admit they're wrong, which I don't really understand. You know, really, what? Human being has not screwed up. We've all screwed up. We've all screwed up. I don't think many of us have screwed up to the level of uh, of Chris Chibnall, who was like, who like blew up Doctor Who. I like blew up this incredibly valuable. Uh, you know, I don't say value. I'm talking about in dollar and cents value. Oh, pounds, you know, pounds and and uh, pounds and shillings. I don't know what you know, pounds and pennies. Uh, you know, uh, sterling value. Yeah, you know, there's a very you know, a, a monetary value. He blew it up. Just totally blew it up. Uh, and and so there was a the, you know season twelve was a massive course correction from season eleven which had uh, no monsters no no alien no enemies no no real danger you know it was, it was a very very boring season uh, and so the season twelve was a massive course correction when they had like they, yeah brought back lots of old masters Cybermen the Master you know all kinds of and it was like. And it was still pretty boring. <laughs> you know, gee, yeah. And although I have to tell you, such the one, I, I felt so bad for him. I, I feel, you know, I really generally, because he put his heart and soul into that. 
if there's any survivor, if there's any survivor from this awful period, I really hope it's him. You know, I really hope it's Because again, and it's not that I loved his portrayal of the master so much. I just love that he loved it so much. You know, that, and that's something that's really been so missing from Doctor Who, this like, uh, you know, this just this real love of it. So, uh, you know, from the, pe- from, uh, uh, from the people making it. So, anyway, so, so, so then, you know, they started work about a year ago on, on Time, Time World Victorious, which I was really excited about when it came out, when they first announced it. So I thought, oh, yes, that last real Doctor Who, ah, David Tennant. And then after a few weeks, uh, I kind of said, well, you know, this is a little bit cynical. This is like a little bit cynical uh, design just to get money out of my pocket, I think. Um, so I was excited about the books, and now I'm not so much. I was going to pre-order them. I really, where I am with Time Look to Victorious is i got to see uh, where, uh, yeah, so I'll see what the offerings are. I'll see what the audio is. I'll see what the comics are. And look, I will probably get the audio to, to review it, but I'm not, like, on fire about it anymore. Because, yeah, what Time Look Victorious is really saying is, is waving a white flag. It's saying, we cannot sell anything with Joda's face on because they can't. So, yeah, when, 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 when this came out a few weeks ago and people were, and, and yeah, this was the obvious uh, uh, commentary. The pro Jodie Whittaker, uh, you know, fans, YouTube channels were like, "Don't even say it. Don't go there, girlfriend." Mm-mm. Yeah, why not? It's the obvious inference. Anyway, so uh, so now we I, we uh, we just saw the the latest Doctor Who uh, magazine came out. I was I was really looking forward to reading production notes by by Chris Jimmels because they're so much fun to roast. Uh, there's like a six-page interview of, of writers of like really bad episodes of the recent episode, which I might go over. But you know, there was no production notes because you know Chibnall just doesn't like put out work. And, and I and I really think the real difference between Chibnall and, and Russell D. Davis, other than massive, the massive amounts of talent, was the clear love that Russell D. Davis had for Doctor Who because he couldn't stop pushing it out. Yeah, thirteen episodes a year, torch with Sarah Jane adventures. Yeah. Chibnall was like, oh, I'll cut it to another episode. Oh, God, no. Yeah, that's really, again, that's the impression I get. So the uh, the, the rumours came out, I think, last week that uh, uh, because of the current uh, uh, pandemic, the, the global uh, uh, situation, that, that the the uh, the season they were going to make, season 13, which is going to be ten, a pitiful 10 episodes, and wasn't going to be arriving till, uh, was it the end of 2021, beginning of 2022, maybe? Uh, has now been uh, cut down to six episodes. Uh, and I'm thinking, well, why don't they just, you know, call the whole thing off? Yeah, at that point, just say, I blame blame it all on, you know, the uh, on the pandemic and say, and then restart again in 2023 for the 60th anniversary. That would seem... But then, uh, who was it? I think, I think no, on the time. So it reminded me, like, no... HBO have paid for have paid for a season. They got they 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 they're going to want want some episodes. So I can see so I can see them wanting to make six episodes and split it over two years. Just, just, just a so they don't admit defeat. They don't admit they're wrong, even though they were clearly screwed up. And b so if they go they, yeah the biggest problem they have with the Jodie Whittaker era is showing Jodie Whittaker era episodes. The more episodes they show, the worse it gets. So I think they want to minimize, minimize the damage. So yeah, so then finally we got a, a, another piece of news that uh, you know the, 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 the current pandemic has hit Doctor Who magazine, hit Panini uh, and Doctor Who magazine very, very uh, uh, yeah, very, very hard. Is it Panini or is it Marvel UK? Whatever. Has, has, has hit them hard and uh, they've decided to curtail the 13th Doctor comic strip, which was actually going to stop in three months anyway and be replaced by, by, by Time of uh, 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 Victoria. So we've got at least six months of no Jody comic strip. Now, the comic strip is the most expensive part to make uh, in, in, in the magazine, from what I understand. I think it's the, the, the most expensive pages, which is why it's got reduced and reduced uh, uh, over, over the last few years. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I, again, this is opinion, not fact. I am uh, I am positing the, uh, the the theory that they are using the pandemic as a cover to 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 curtail you know the, uh, having to use Jodie Whittaker's doctor because again they are reliant on sales they are reliant on sales and there's no high street sales so they're reliant on purely on fan sales fans are not interested. In Jodie Whittaker, Doctor. When I say not interested, they're not interested in the in to the extent that they will financially support it. How do we know? Do you remember in 2018 when the, when it started? Back in 2018, when I innocently thought this might be, uh, I, I I was really looking forward to it. I thought it'd be, be it'll be, be it was gonna be it was gonna work out well. I didn't listen 
to you know to the smart people like Doomcock who were saying, "Oh, it's going to be." Awful. I didn't listen to them. I thought, "No, no." I watched it, and it was indeed awful. <laughs> it was indeed absolutely awful. Yeah, uh, but do you remember all the merchandise? All those tons and tons of merchandise, which kind of seemed to dry up almost instantly. You know why it dried up instantly? Because unlike the BBC, who can make things for agenda, who can make things to be you know to be stunning and brave, people who you know Doctor Who magazine can't do that. Big Finish can't do that. They have to uh, make things that will appeal to a commercial base of people people who will buy it, uh, who are uh, who are not doing it, decidedly not doing it. So, yeah, uh, Doctor Who Magazine, again, I've, 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 uh, I, I think it's six of one, half dozen the other. That They go, ah, yeah, well, we can save ourselves a few bob over the, you know, over, over, you know, over the next few months. But, um, although, really, it's been like, there's only a two month lag time to get that comic strip ready. Okay, fine, whatever. Uh, we can save ourselves a, uh, a few bob over the next few months, and we can stop alienating fans who who like you know can't stand it, which is I, I think the majority of them. So I think they're going to be doing uh, was it reprinting uh, 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 older strips, and good for them, and then going straight into Time Lord uh, uh, Victorians. So my question is. Will the BBC follow suit? Will the BBC follow suit? And yeah, they got to put something out. They have got to put some kind of season out uh, because HBO pay for it. You know, they they got to do it. They, they got to do it. But maybe, yeah, maybe just maybe they may somebody at the BBC. They, funnily enough, you know what we really need right now. We need a Michael Grade, you know, Michael Grade who came in and destroyed Doctor Who. We need a Michael Grade to come back and go, this is not working. Stop with your nonsense. Start making TV that appeals to people rather than appeals to the blue checkmark Twitter arty. So there we are. Uh, oh, and the, you know, the, the, the other news is uh, the, the, probably the end of the uh, the ongoing specials. They did, what, four specials? Yeah, I think they did, uh, did more. They did, uh, you know, a bunch of specials a year. I can see, yeah, I, I I can see that not down. I can see that partially down to Jody, but mostly down to the uh, uh, the pandemic. So there, yeah, there we go. Uh, and so has the BBC completely lost confidence in in uh, in this era? And yeah, <laughs> well, they've lost confidence in it to the extent that they uh, they they know it will not sell. It will not sell, and it will not generate viewers either. You know, I think they completely lost confidence in it. What they haven't lost confidence in is the crusading agenda. That this uh, that that this TV show represents to them, which you know, again, the fans say agenda. What agenda? Agenda spender? Oh, I don't see any agenda. That's the only thing you see is the agenda, just like us, and that's the only reason you like it because it's objectively awful. You know, just objectively awful. So there you go. My name is Cena Beckett, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. <laughs>